I picked up this vintage art deco dresser from my local restore. It was 30% off that day, so I got it for $52, which I think is a pretty good deal. My goal with this piece is to remove the paint from the previous refinisher and try to refinish the wood and the veneer top so that it looks a little bit closer to how it did when it was originally made. I'm removing the hardware and I'm going to be replacing these with something a little bit more modern that I found at the ReStore. Hopefully I can use this hardware for another project or I will be donating this for someone else to use. I'm going to start by cleaning the hardware that I want to put on the dresser and I'm just gonna boil this in 50% water and 50% vinegar for about five minutes. I'm using some diluted dish soap and water to clean the piece. I found some coins in the dresser lodged between the drawers. Maybe that means this piece is lucky? I hope so at least. I'm using my carbide scraper to remove the first layer of paint. I prefer not to use stripper just because I find it messy and uh, the fumes are strong so I just prefer to use the scraper. I find it a lot faster too. Already we can see that it's got a really nice wood veneer underneath. It was quite difficult scraping in the direction of the wood grain with the paint on so heavily and really some parts really stuck to the piece so I did have to scrape against the wood grain in some areas just to get an area lifted off to scrape in the right direction. I am seeing the primer now underneath the paint. So it looks like this piece was fully primed, but just with wear and use over time, the paint was chipping. find the best way to use the scraper is by making sure your piece doesn't move around too much. I'm 
using the weight of my body to hold the piece in place. And I find it just makes it a lot easier to scrape away the finish on top. Sometimes I put my furniture pieces on wheels, but in this case, I kept the dresser on the ground because I found that to be the easiest way to keep it from not moving around as I was scraping. I'm going to remove this wood detailing on the top. It seems to me like there was once a mirror in the middle and it just looks too random now. So I'm gonna take this off and hopefully the veneer underneath isn't too damaged. As you can see, we are starting to scrape back the top coat, which was applied to the original piece likely before it was refinished and painted. And of course, there's still little bits of paint everywhere, so I'm just going to keep working away at this until I get it all removed. Because I was scraping against the grain to get this paint off, I wasn't putting full amount of strength and pressure into the scraper because I didn't want to scrape too far down and ruin the direction of the wood veneer. but this was really the only way I could get the paint off efficiently. Not even close to the amount I scraped. I was thinking about keeping the base as is, and so I started to scrape the paint off of the base. Some of the wood detailing on the front of the base was quite damaged and the paint was just really difficult to remove. I even tried a little bit of stripper and it just, just wouldn't come off. And so I decided I was going to replace the base. still stuck on so I'm trying to figure out where else it's attached. Is 
the screw that I forgot. It's definitely in here. Wow, just making more work for myself here. I'm going to use the ends off of the base to attach new legs. I got the two end pieces here and we're going to attach them to either side. I'm using angled brackets and these tapered legs, which I think will look great and be a good amount of support for the piece. I will use a little bit of gel stain on the legs just to darken them and make them look a little more uniform with the rest of the stain on this piece. I'm using gel stain in early American for the legs. And it's not a chisel, it's not a trowel, it's a gouge. And I'm going to be using it to scrape away the paint that I could not get to with my carbide scraper. I'm gonna be careful here just because I don't want to damage the wood. This is a pretty powerful tool, but I do wanna get that paint off. There were some damaged areas to the veneer and I'm going in with some wood filler and some of the dust from sanding just to blend it in together 
try to get as close to that veneer color as I can. After scraping, I'm going in with my orbital sander and some 80 grit sandpaper to level out the surface and level out any of the original stain that was still left behind. I'm going to be staining this piece, so I will work my way up to 220 grit sandpaper with my orbital sander, and then I'll go in by hand with a sanding block uh, at 400 grit, just to make sure that our surface is nice and clean and smooth and ready for new stain. With the sander, I want to be careful around the edges of the veneer on the drawers because that can easily uh, chip off or be sanded down too far. And I'm also putting a little bit of pressure, but not too much. I, you really wanna let the tool do the work and choose the right tool for the right job. So. As I mentioned, I'm using a grit sandpaper and then we're gonna work our way up. And I'm just keeping it in constant motion and not staying too long in one section because that again can also break through the veneer surface. I'm using some of the dust from sanding and wood glue to fill the holes and any sort of dents that I found when sanding and couldn't fix with the sander. So I'm gonna fill these and hopefully they will blend in okay once I stain. I do recommend not using the top of the furniture to mix your glue and sawdust because I made quite a mess and I had to go back and clean up this later. There was uh, areas where there was just glue stuck to the wood and I had to scrape that off. So I definitely, um, definitely learned my lesson here. I won't be mixing this way again. And lastly, I'm going to be going in with a 400 grit sandpaper and a sanding block to make sure our surface is nice and smooth.
I'm using a wood stain in Early American and I'm applying it evenly and then I will be wiping this away pretty quickly. I find it best to work in sections uh, because you don't want this stain to sit too long on the wood. You definitely don't want it to dry. And for the areas that are a little less uneven, I'm using the same Early American, but as a gel stain. And I find this just is a lot easier to apply in these areas. And I'm using a old sock um, over top of my glove because I find this to be the easiest way to apply it. The reason I chose a darker stain is because there were a lot of areas that although I was careful, it seems the wood had already been damaged and this was the best way to hide some of those imperfections in the veneer and I found it to do a pretty good job but I ultimately didn't want to go too dark because then you wouldn't be able to see the variation in the grain so I think this worked pretty well but in in other cases I would have just kept it clear with a clear coat because I really did like the color of the veneer as is. Here was an area where the veneer broke through and I couldn't get the color to match so I'm using a little bit of dark brown chalk paint and I'm applying a thin coat and then I will wipe it away immediately with a damp lint-free cloth. I'm just trying to blend this as much as possible.
I'm using a neutral gray brown chalk paint to paint the back, which is just a thin sheet of plywood, but it was painted blue from the previous refinisher. And so I just wanted something a little more neutral that wouldn't stand out as much. There was still some areas where you could see the damage in the wood and on the veneer. So I didn't want to go in and stain this again and I decided to use a antiquing wax. I first applied a thin coat of clear wax and then I'm now going in with the antiquing wax which is a darker shade and this is gonna help cover up some of those imperfections and just blend nicely into the piece. I'm applying it a little bit more heavily in those damaged areas. Ultimately, I will be blending this and removing any excess, but um, with a little bit extra heavier in these areas, we can try to cover up some of that damage. I like to use furniture wax a lot. I find it just gives the wood a very uh, rich look and brings out a lot of the color and I just think it blends so nicely into wood and veneer. So I'm using um, a special wax brush that I got and I only use this brush for waxing. Um, so I don't use it with paint or stain or anything else. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this is starting to look. The antiquing wax is definitely covering up some of that damage and I'm just really liking the variation in tone in the wood.
I've added a little gold spray paint to the hardware. Once this dries, we're going to reattach it. And unfortunately, the size was just a tad bit off. I thought it was gonna work, but it, it's pretty tight. So I'm going to have to uh, carefully hammer these in place using a cloth over top and then just to protect the finish and then a hammer to actually get it nice and secure into those holes. I'm going to put it all together and stage it now. There's still a little bit of excess wax, so I will remove that with a clean, dry cloth. Here is what we started with, and here is the finished product. I'm fairly happy with this. It was a lot of work, it took me about four days, but overall I enjoyed the process and I think we did a pretty good job of refinishing it back to what it somewhat would have looked like when it was first built. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It'll really help my channel. Thanks for watching.